Gates gets off the line very well indeed. And Kelly shadowing him. The Holden Racing Team owned the front row and kept their ranks intact into the first corner, but behind them, Jason Bright defended a challenge from Marcus Ambrose. The order up front was static for the early laps, but the battle from eighth and beyond was intense. Simon Wills fighting an ailing car, mugged by both Triple Eight Falcons. It's Max oh. Wilson who makes contact. Both Triple Eight cars are in here. Radisich and Wilson. Simon getting his ears boxed at the okay. moment. And he is yelling and screaming, Simon Wills. He's been under attack. Mark Winterbottom also took advantage. Wills hit the pits. Up front, the complexion changed when the teammates came together in a big way. Escape under siege, and Kelly oh, was oh. really wrong-footed there. Oh, a terrible he's lost contact. Two positions, possibly three. If he can't get going, no, Ingle gets through him. So he's lost three positions there, Todd Kelly. That opened the door on the race. Scaife then came under heavy pressure from Bright and appeared to be the cork in the bottle. He later steadied to give himself some breathing space. Stephen Johnson dropped the cylinder and dropped out of the event. The top 30 cars were lapping in the 1 minute 11s, reflecting the close times in qualifying, but the best was yet to come and it came up front. Bright ran wide on turn 10, complaining of understeer, allowing Todd Kelly to come through and pressure him, and for the next three corners, it was a classic duel. And Kelly comes back on the inside drives out of the corner it'll be interesting again to the next they've been side by side into the right hander Kelly switches across in front of him with a dramatic move that freed Ambrose to attack Scaife with two laps left Brad Jones bad luck continued a nasty collision on the last lap but the biggest shock was at the front when Ambrose saw an opportunity and pounced Got the final lap. It's a big battle here. Ambrose has a go. He escape his run off the circuit. Now, this is interesting. He's lost a lot of ground. And look, Engel has swept through in all that drama to take the victory. And Todd Kelly has pounced as well. So Ambrose and Scape have come together in a costly, costly. Can tell us what tell us what happened then. Right, just dodged the inside and ran to the side of it. I mean, probably Darrell didn't think he'd be that desperate with his championship where it is, but. I can assure you, if they're going to turn those sorts of games on, we'll turn them on too, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I'm a racer and I go for the win. And um, the hole was there. I was way past the B-pillar. And, and uh, it's just unfortunate we damaged my front steering on, on the side of Todd's car. You know, uh, I'm a racer, mate. You know, just got to have a go. Um, I'm here, here for the fans and here for Ford and I'm trying to win races. Bad blood between HRT and Stone Brothers, and you're looking now at not only the positions for that race, of course, but the front row for today, at least for race two, Engel and Kelly. So the teammates of those respective protagonists will be beside each other. Marcus Ambrose did manage to recover strongly, but while Russell Engel capitalised on a change of luck, the bad luck has continued for Mark Scaife. He's much further down the order, as we'll see in just a moment. There he is, 14th after that just in front of Garth Tander, right behind Greg Murphy, who uh, we'll talk to very shortly because he's had a rough weekend as well. Craig Lowndes, likewise. And that rounds out the field as we introduce our expert commentator, Neil Crompton. By gee, that was a bit of a surprise, mate. We didn't think that the first race would be so dramatic. No, we thought we were in for one of those relatively quiet sprint races where, you know, the grid order ultimately determines the finishing order. That certainly was not the case. I think quite genuinely Mark Scaife was surprised. You know, he turned in on his normal race line at the final corner there. And the last thing he was expecting, which was noted in his comments when Rusty spoke to him in the pit lane, is for all of a sudden the championship leader to make a desperate move down the inside but look he got up there he the gap was there he fired in he saw an opportunity he did get the car alongside and uh, quite frankly as I said I think Mark was quite astonished by that and caught